Good evening, everyone. I'm uh, Dr. Brandon Hamilton. We're bringing you on a fabulous uh, show tonight. Uh, I had a background, uh, some of you who have seen shows earlier may have remembered me as a management consultant. Before that, however, I was an engineer, and before that I was a chemist. Uh, so there's, there's an element of chemistry in today's show, but we're going to take it to another level with this friend that I'm going to introduce you to. Um, I'm also a professor and, and uh, a scholar of management. And in those professions, you find yourself in the libraries all the time. And that is certainly the case with me. I was in and out of libraries, uh, looking up uh, whatever I was prepping for a course that I was teaching or researching for a client that I was working with. And this one particular library uh, local to one of the universities I work at, I kept seeing this one guy uh, sitting back in the stacks. And every time I was there, which was a lot, he was there and I said, that sounds like somebody I need to know. And so I walked over there and asked him, what are you doing in this, in this library? And we uh, have been friends ever since. His name is uh, Wayne Dawson. So uh, this show is really about him. I really want you to also enjoy him as I've enjoyed him over these seven years. And also hear some of the vision he has for why uh, he found himself in the library all the time. So I'm gonna start off with, um, asking him a little bit about himself, his history, his background, and what led him to uh, a profession of uh, chemistry and eventually metallurgy. Wayne, uh, very interested in hearing in your words what uh, kinds of things led to your interest in chemistry, eventually metallurgy, and from there, uh, please, if you will, extend us into your vision of the museum and some of the other things that you've shared with me over the years that I've known you. Okay, Dr. Hamilton, uh, uh, to to talk about uh, how I got interested in uh, chemistry, I want to go back to, it, it starts at your childhood, home, my parents, my dad was a science teacher, we had a lot of books around, so the one thing I did was I really got into the, um, uh, I got into the Gilbert chemistry sets, they had these chemistry sets and I got one for a Christmas gift, and I did all the experiments, that was back in the 60s, and then I liked it so much, I bought every Gilbert chemistry set there was, that there were three of them. So I really got interested in those different sets. I did every experiment there was. And then, so by the time I was done with the first one, I said, oh, I really love chemistry. So I started getting into chemistry. So over the next two or three years, I started doing all of the different experiments. Uh, and that's how I got into uh, chemistry. So the other thing I want to talk about is to, that I'm going to talk about a, a little bit more later on is, in 1967, I went to art school, and we were exposed to all these different forms of art, sculptures, painting, batiking, all kinds of uh, different types of media. So I did very, I really loved that, I excelled. I was in a citywide competition that I won for sculptures. But I think science overrode the art, so I never really, really did, did anything with it. So I pursued the sciences, because. Uh, I went to uh, Dunbar in 1969, I think I went to Dunbar and took all the mechanics. And they were showing us a movie and they talked about metallurgy. And I said, what's this metallurgy stuff? Never heard of it. Before then, I was interested in chemistry. So I started finding out what, what is metallurgy. So I looked in, into metallurgy. Metallurgy is just where they, it's like a, a lot like chemistry and chemical engineering, but they specialize in just metals. And if you look at the periodic table, most of the periodic table is metals. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, that's very interesting. So I said, oh, well, let me pursue that. And I was about, you know, 14 years old. And I says, well, wh what do I need to do to go into that? So what I did was I started investigating. I started looking at the college books, what is required, what schools have metallurgy, what's required. So I decided, let me take all the math and science I could take and then see if that'll get me into school. So that's what I did. I took all the math and science I could and uh, then I applied. 
and I got into school uh, f for metallurgy. And one thing I like to say about it is um, I went to a, here in Illinois, went to the University of Illinois. Uh, one thing I like to say is that uh, science, being in the sciences opened up doors because it opened up, even in my, I think my junior year, uh, the school I was at, I went out and got a job during the summer. Some schools have co-ops where you can get, where you can work in your field, apprenticeship programs or, or, or corporate programs where you could work during the summer when you're not going to school. So they had a program where, I could, where you could work and go to school. So I applied to these different programs, I recommend. And, and uh, I got in it, I applied. I had the opportunity to work at NASA in California in Lockheed. So I applied and they were right next to each other in, in uh, Silicon Valley out in California. So uh, I was lucky enough to get an offer from both of them, so I didn't know which one to pick. <laughs> and I picked uh, Lockheed, not NASA, and both of them were working on the space shuttle. So I was blessed to have the opportunity just by, you know, you know I, I was just getting into the sciences, but I was blessed to have the opportunity to work on the space shuttle project and at, at that time. And, and uh, also, it began to, that's when my metallurgy career really began, because I worked in the metallurgy laboratory, and we did quality control and figure analysis. And I was like, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, like, oh, I'm doing this stuff. And I really didn't know the space shuttle. I, you heard about it, but you really didn't know about it. So it wasn't, a, it became bigger later on. Mm -hmm. But I got to work on the, developing the tiles and different stuff. And I began to really, it began to really shape my career in one aspect in terms of the quality control and figure analysis, which later on I really flourished in, in a different area, but I did that later on. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, so at, at the same time, I, while I was out there, I got into crystal growing. They had all metals of crystals, people don't realize all metals of crystals, which I didn't know until I got into metallurgy. And while I was out in uh, Silicon Valley, they had all the universities were there and they were offering all these courses, Stanford and San Jose State and all the different universities. They had all these courses and all this different stuff. So I took courses in uh, crystal growing, mm -hmm. crystallography. And uh, Raytheon, which is a, uh, one of the military corporations that used to build a lot of, uh, in high tech, so they offered a course in crystal growing. I took that, the junior colleges offer courses in growing integrated circuit fire. I took all that and that's all based on crystal technology too. So I was excited, bright eyed, bushy tailed, and uh, everything was there, so I just soaked it up. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I did. And, and uh, so then it was time for me to go back to school. So then I went back to school, uh, got into the metallurgy. But when I, one thing I decided to do was to take my background and going to, I didn't go into the aerospace industry or the electronics industry. I went into the steel industry <laughs> with my background. So steel uh, mills start courting us at the university. Uh, Republic Steel came down and they had a management trainee program, which I got, I, um, I went down, talked to them, and talked to other companies. They gave me an offer as a, to start out as a management trainee. So I like that idea because um, I like the idea of being able to be in the position of running. So I said, okay, with my background, that background that I have with metallurgy, if I run things, so I like the idea of management. So I said, okay, that's a good idea. And so I decided to go into management. So I started out at, at Republic Steel as a management trainee. And they had a good training program and I didn't really realize it until I got older how good their program was because what they do is they bring you in and you spend two years on a management training program. If you get in a graduate management training program, you spend five years and you get to go over the entire company. So they, I got to work in every department in the entire steel mill from, the, from purchasing to shipping to receiving to engineering to quality control and then the steel mill they have all kinds of departments in, in the large integrated mills. It's like 5,000 employees. The plan is like a mile long by a half mile deep and there's, and there's various departments. So I was, was blessed again to have the opportunity to work in all the different departments throughout the whole mill over a couple year period. And then I kind of knew where I wanted to be already. I, I hired into the melt shop. The melt shop is where they make the molten steel. They make steel from scratch. So basically, you apply your chemistry. It goes back to the chemistry. You get to mix. Uh, you get to mix in all of the different minerals to make a certain type of chemistry. Mm -hmm. 
So it's like baking a cake. Mm. So if I want to make a chocolate cake or if I want to make this kind of steel, I put in these minerals. Mm. And so I, that was very interesting to me because it applied chemistry. Mm. So I said, okay, that's the, that's the department I want to go in. So after going around the entire mill and working in every department over a three-year period, I decided to go ahead and uh, stay in the melt shop, the one I picked. And one good thing is you start at the bottom level as a foreman, knowing you're going to be a, a manager eventually at some point in time. So you learn every supervisor job and you work every supervisor job and you just go around and work every job so you can have a better understanding of how everything works. So that really got me motivated. I understood everything. Over the years, I worked my way up to uh, a certain level. They put me in the graduate management training program, which gave me a broader view of the higher level management. So I did that. And then eventually I got to a certain point. Now, the one thing I did, and I think back in the 70s, a lot of people weren't going from company to company. It's more prominent now in the industry. What I did was I would reach a certain, I'd set a goal for myself, reach a certain level. And then if the opportunity wasn't there for me to move up, I go to a company where I can move up. And every company I went to, I spent five years mm. because I set goals and learn everything, work my way up to a certain level in five years. So I left there, went to another steel mill, worked my way up there, went to another steel mill in Seattle, uh, Jorgensen in Seattle. I worked there for a while. Uh, I was blessed again with the opportunity to work on high tech. We were the only people in the world that made certain types of projects. We made the stuff for the space shuttle, specialty items, nuclear submarines, we made items. Uh, we made items for the space station now, we made items for that. So I was, I was blessed to be in an operation or a corporation that gave me the opportunity to uh, work on a lot of high tech stuff and see a lot of different and it also gave me uh, another broad area because while I was at that company, I was plant chemist, plant metallurgist, uh, lab supervisor, production management manager over the melt shop, steel operations. Also worked in the, uh, the Ford shop and heat treating and a, a lot of a variety of areas in the steel mill that gave me a very broad, that, that brought my background overall. But I spent my whole time in the, uh, we also got into, uh, uh, I started getting into product, project management at the time. And uh, so I began to run a lot of projects, manage a lot of projects, come up with different projects. So I was multitasking at the time, because at one time I was doing project management, I was lab supervisor, plant metallurgist, and I was also production manager. Uh, well, while I was there, it gave me the opportunity to, uh, I reached back until when I first started at Lockheed, failure analysis. Along the, over the years, I took a couple of courses in failure analysis. Now, when I was in Seattle at Jorgensen, I began to do all of the failure analysis. And to me, that was probably my best job I ever had in terms of, use, it, it's like forensic science you see on TV nowadays. Why did this part fail? What happened? What caused the bridge to, to fall apart? What caused the, the axle to break? So what I got to do is apply my metallurgy and some of the techniques back in the early days when, when I first started Lockheed that I used to watch them apply and figure out why, why the, um, what failed, what caused it to fail. Was it the bad chemistry? It wasn't made properly. Was it the uh, different treatments that they did to it to cause it? Was it something else that somebody else did that caused it to fail? Or was it that it wasn't made properly? So I used to do all that analysis and, and write up the report and uh, either honor the claim that the customer said, oh, you didn't make it right, it's your fault, or no, we made it right, you just didn't follow the proper steps and how you treated it. Mm -hmm. So I did that and that was a very fun time and a good thing I used to do. Uh, then eventually, went into metallurgy, I eventually came back to Chicago, ran a steel mill in Chicago, did that for a while, and then I decided, okay, looked up, all my kids were grown, it's time for me to, let, let's do something different in my life. So I decided to step out. I had always wanted to go back to school, but I couldn't go back to school because uh, I wanted to be involved in my kids' lives. And I had the, my three kids and I was involved in their lives, taking them to sports and uh, they were uh, uh, snowboarding, skateboarding, dance, horseback riding, a lot of different stuff. 
and I coached track and they were in the figure skating and everything. So what I decided, since they were all grown, I said, oh, now, what can I, now, I always want to go back to school. Now I can do it. So then I decided to, okay, uh, let me see what's going on. So I decided to uh, get back into school and work on a couple of degrees. I, I I've always been into computers as a hobby. So I said, well, let me look at that. So I went to school for computers and also at the same time, uh, another degree in project management. So that's when I met Dr. Hamilton. Uh, when I went back to school, my whole thing is uh, I'm a lot older now and I'm in, in college and my thing is, okay, there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to ace everything. All you gotta do is put the time in. So what I decided to do when I went back to school and Dr. Hamilton used to see me in the library, I was in the library every day, all day. I was either in the library or in class and I took three years and just did that all day, every day and made a commitment. And so and that's when I met Dr. Hamilton and we hit it off and developed a, a, a relationship. And uh, we used to have a lot of good conversations about chemistry and just science in general and being able to pursue and the things that by being majoring in the sciences, they are so interrelated and it opens up so many doors that, and we used to talk about that and you know what he went through and what I went through and the opportunities that come out of that. And I would have never known as a kid, a bright eyed bushy tail kid, being interested in certain things and just pursuing what I think I'm interested in and going for it and all the doors it opened up. So one thing I learned and, and by talking to Dr. Hamilton, I think we both kind of realized just pursuing my interests. And people told me, oh, that's hard. To me, yeah, everything is hard, but life is hard. But to me, the sciences weren't that hard because I was interested. Anything that, so I spent the time and the effort. Math didn't come easy to me. I wasn't one of these people that just got math and science, but I put forth the effort and the time and, uh, and it opens up so many doors and so many opportunities and I was blessed in order to uh, do that. So um, there's a lot of other things that I've done over the years I'm not gonna get into right now, but I also branched off into uh, consulting on businesses, starting up businesses, running businesses, uh, doing, uh, with my background in management, in project management, I also had, also had the opportunity to uh, run different projects for different groups. And uh, over the years, I always been interested in rocks and minerals and crystals. But you kind of like, you know, you're so busy doing things, you know, Everyday life, you get caught in a rut and you don't pursue stuff that you really, you know, might have a little interest as a hobby. So I was so caught up into my kids and, and, and I enjoyed that. But now I had my time. So the thing is, okay, now, okay. So I started trying to pursue the things that I was really into. Uh, I have sisters and brothers out in California. So I was out in California visiting my sister. Uh, and we were up in the mountains. She has a house up in the mountains, south of Lake Tahoe. So I was up there. It's very rural out there. And so we met this guy and he had this piece of jewelry on. There was a nice crystal, sort of like what I have right here. He had a crystal and my sister and I commented on it. We says, oh, he says, oh yeah. He says, I have some more stuff in my house. And he lived right down the street from my sister. So we go over there and we look at it. He says, oh, there's a, a, a mineral rock, mineral gem store in Murphy, which is the next town over. And then there's another one in Angel Camp, which is old gold country. And they have a big store there. So we said, yeah, we're gonna have to go check that out. So my sister and I, we had some one Saturday. We said, yeah, let's go check out this store. So we go down to the store and they got all these beautiful minerals and crystals. The guy says, oh, you think this is nice? Go check out the big store in Angel Camp, which is another 20 miles down the road. So we get in there, we go down there and we go in there and both of us just our mouths drop up and we're just in awe, like two little kids. We're running around, wow, this stuff is gorgeous. This is amazing. And uh, after about an hour of running around the store and looking at everything and getting so excited, the light went off and I told my sister, I said, you know what? We don't have anything like this in Chicago. I said, we need something like this in the, in, in, cause we're not, we don't see things like this in, in the city. And I says, you know what I'm gonna do? I wanna start, open up a museum or start a business, art gallery, a store where people in the city of Chicago could be exposed to this beauty and the stuff and crystals of nature. I had always read about it, but I really never really pursued it. So at that point in time, 
I decided to go ahead and start a business that would expose people, adults and kids, to what's going on with crystals and fo- crystals mainly. Fossils is another part of it. So at that point in time, uh, so I mentioned my sister. Let me just talk about my sister a little bit because my sister is my partner. Okay. We both, ever since we were kids, we were both interested in rocks and minerals. So she had a slightly different fascination than I did, but she's really into it. And at the same time, um, in raising my kids, uh, I used to take my kids a lot of different places, museums, travel a lot, see a lot of different stuff. And my daughter de- developed a fascination too. So those are my two partners. My daughter, she lives on the West Coast in Washington, and my sister who lives in the Bay Area. So those are my two partners. And everything I do and everything I've built has been in collaboration with them and everything I bounce off of them. So those are my sounding boards when it comes to where I'm at with the, what I'm gonna talk about for the, for, the, for the remainder of this show. Those are my uh, two rocks, really. Okay. They're, they're, they keep me going and, uh, and they help support me in, in anything I do and make sure I'm going down the right path. Because mm-hmm. I always, you know, you can have ideas, but I always believe in bouncing my ideas off of other people and getting input. Because I think it always makes your idea better. So, okay now, so what I decided to do is, I came, I left California, came back to Chicago. So I had this idea in the back of my head. So I'm working and I said, well, well, if I'm really gonna get into this stuff and I'm gonna really do it, I'm gonna have to make a career out of it. I'm gonna make this my retirement job, mm-hmm. a hobby that I can turn into a retirement job. I said, that's the neatest thing I could do. I could, if I could do this and do it for, cause I don't have too long to retire. If I can do this for the rest of my life and do something I like doing every day and also, impact and expose people to stuff, that'd be a neat retirement job. Mm-hmm. So I said, okay, let me start planning for this now. So what I did, I came up with a five-year plan. It took me seven years <laughs> and I'm still working on it, but it, 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 I came up with a plan. You have to have a plan. So I came up with my plan. My plan was to pursue, uh, okay, do this in steps. So I kind of jotted down some, uh, a plan on paper. Okay, now first thing I was gonna do was to, okay, find out about the industry, get some information about it, learn about it, so how do you do that? Okay, come to find out, go to the places where they pull the minerals out the ground. Uh, So one thing I did is let me take a couple trips and find out some places. So I got on the internet, looked up, I'm in Illinois. Okay, what's in Illinois? Illinois, our state, and doing research to find our state mineral is fluorite in Illinois. So, okay. So do they have places where you can get fluoride out the ground? So I did my research to come to find out in Southern Illinois on the Ohio River in Hardin County, they have, they had, uh, they produced, they used to produce 80% of the fluoride in the world. I mean, in the United States for the United States, 80% of fluoride. But over years, it all got outsourced to Mexico and China. Mm. So, but they still, so I said, let me go down there and see what's going on down there. So I looked on the uh, internet, they have a fluoride festival in a fluorite museum down there. So let me go check this out. So I scheduled my time to go down there. And then I was telling my sister about it. My sister said, well, hey, I'm gonna fly out. I'm gonna go with you. So she flew out and we went down there and we both loved to camp outdoors. So we went down there and camped out in the state park and went around all the different places. And they had a museum, right, it's right on the Ohio River. So right across the Ohio River, they have another museum in, in another city about 30 miles away where you can go to their museum, which is one of the best fluorite museums in the world, and you can go digging for fluorite. So I know, we were like ecstatic. Mm. So we did that, and then we, so we did that trip. And now, at the same time she was here, I says, we found out about another trip called a Geo Festival, which is on the opposite side of the state. So we said, well, while we're doing this, let's do that too. So we did that. So that is one of the first trips I took getting into minerals. While we were on the trip, a friend told us, oh, they got rock, we, we met a guy from Chicago, uh, a friend, uh, he's a real close friend of mine now, and he says, oh, he and his wife were there too, and we met them, and then he said, uh, they got rock clubs, we're, we're in the Chicago Rock and Mineral Society, Chicago. and I said, oh, okay, and he says, they also have other ones in Chicago land too. So I said, oh, that's neat to know. So when I get back, so trip is over, get back to Chicago. So what I decided to do was look him up. So I got on the internet, 
looked it up Chicago Rock and Mineral Society and started looking and come to find out there was a South Suburban Rock and Mineral Society out where I live. I'm in the South Suburbs of Chicago. And uh, there's a rock club in, out here. So I joined, I said, if I'm gonna do this, let me get into it and really learn. So I got into the, joined the rock club in Chicago. And then I joined the uh, one in Chicago and the one in South Suburban. So I'm a member of the Chicago Rock Club and the South Suburban Rock Club. So I joined both. Okay, now, one of the other things I decided to do is, okay, I need to structure this business. How am I gonna do it? So I decided, I began to analyze and I decided to create nature's treasures because I say, Nature's created these treasures, this beautiful crystal. So I decided to call my company Nature's Treasures. Mm -hmm. Now that was going to be one business. Now I decided that I wanted that to be the artistic end of it and the, uh, going out and acquiring minerals. But I said, okay, now that's one part. What about the educational and exposure part? As I said, let me start the, uh, a, a museum. And I didn't know what to call the museum. And later on, I decided to call it DCMM, Dawson Crystal Mineral Museum in honor of my father and parents, the Dawsons, because they motivated us to, to, to follow your dreams and exposed us to science. So I started two companies, Nature's Treasures right away, Dawson Crystal Mineral Museum, I didn't start till later on. So uh, another trip I decided to take was to, I heard out about quartz crystals and how beautiful they were. And I heard from one of the people in our club, oh, in Arkansas, that's where all the courts in the world, the beautiful courts come out of Arkansas. So I says, let me go down to Arkansas and see about, so I planned a trip to Arkansas. Went down to Arkansas and it was amazing. I, and uh, I got a lot of information. I went to the Chamber of Commerce and they hooked me up with all the miners and I went to the different mines and talked to people that own the mines and mined all the stuff out the ground. I got so much information. And I was talking to a lady there, and she started a company called Judy's Crystals, Judy. And Judy was telling me, I was talking to her about what I wanted to do. She says, well, if you really want to get into this, you need to go to Tucson, because in Tucson, everybody in the world brings all the crystals to Tucson every year. So, and, and she was trying to tell me how large it was. I couldn't really believe how big it was. She says, if you spend every day going to every show for 16 days, it's going to take you four years to see everything. Mm. And I'm on my seventh year now. And uh, she's right, it would take that much. It's that big, it's like 50 shows going on. They could have up to 500 people at one, 500 vendors at one show. So it's just so much to see. So she was right, and I thank her for her, for her giving me that direction and insight. Uh, Judy's retiring now. I just was down in Arkansas on another trip uh, just a couple months ago and saw her. I was talking to her. She's the one that gave me a lot of good insight. Uh, there's a lot of good people out there I learned by just getting out there and, and getting involved and talking to people and you can, just opening it up to people. I learned a lot. So I joined uh, the South Suburban, SSEC, South Suburban Earth Science Club. And then I also joined the Chicago Rock and Mineral Society, CRMS. And I've been involved for five, six years now in these different groups right now. And uh, Chicago, I'm, I'm the CGMA, Chicago Gem and Mineral Association rep. Uh, there's eight clubs in the Chicagoland group. There used to be like 15, 16 years ago. So my goal is to build it back up, excite kids and stuff. And I'll talk about that a little bit more later on. But the thing is, uh, I got in it, I got involved. I started holding different positions. Uh, for the Chicago Rock and Mineral Society, I held various positions. I'm president of the Chicago Rock and Minerals Society now. Now as a rep for the CGMA, which is all the Chicagoland groups, I started working with them. We put on one big show every year and I'm on that board and I start working with them. I'm vice president now and I've been working with them for four years. Uh, so the thing is to get involved and I'm a type person, I don't believe in just sitting around talking and you get involved and, 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 and things happen. So, okay, now moving on, uh, I had a friend who was a colleague of my wife, Dr. Amadou Wabin, she was a science teacher. And she asked me to uh, come talk to her students. She was teaching earth science. They talk about rocks and crystals and minerals. So I went in and talked to her students. And they were so, and what I did was, I developed a program. What I decided to do was talk to them about what comes out of the state of Illinois. So I said, what's better than, than to talk about what's in your own backyard? So I decided to talk about our state mineral, fluorite. So I brought in samples of fluorite crystals. And, uh, 
and I brought in samples of fluoride crystals from other states that could, uh, you know, show uh, to compare what in Illinois and what happens to fluoride in other parts of the world. And so I did fluoride, I did yields. Yields come out of Illinois on the Mississippi. So I brought in yields. Also, I brought in pyrite. Pyrite, they have pyrite comes out of southern Illinois in the coal mines. So I bought pyrite in and also brought in fossils. So the students were so excited. I passed the samples out. They were excited. They were, they were so excited about me talking about it. They got to handle it. And then that helped. Uh, so I did that. And then I did it again with the um, career day. My friend uh, asked me to do a career day because his son, they needed people to, to speak at the school. And so he asked me to do it. So I said, yeah, I did the science program for the earth science and I can do the same for career day. So I did it for career day. I went to uh, three different classrooms and the kids went crazy. The principal walked by and says, what's going on here? These kids are so excited. And, uh, and then the light started, okay, now, these kids are so excited about this. And I start pondering and thinking about